by living this life, he made us rich beyond our wildest dreams. Because he made us righteous. Because he lived the righteous life. Do we understand that God the Father only accepts absolute perfection? Do you, do you understand that? That's why the, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And there is no other. Because Jesus Christ is that perfection. He didn't just die for you. Don, he died your death. And he lived your life. That's where it's at, brothers and sisters. I want to read you a little something. This is uh, from the Desire of Ages, page 83. In our association with one another, we should take heed lest we forget Jesus. Here's the key, brothers and sisters. Listen. Lest we forget Jesus and pass along unmindful that he is not with us. When we become absorbed in worldly things so that we have no thought for him in whom our hope of eternal life is centered, we separate ourselves from Jesus and from the heavenly angels. These holy beings cannot remain where the Savior's presence is not desired. And his absence is not marked. This is, this is why discouragement so often exists among the professed followers of Christ. Many attend religious services and are refreshed and comforted by the Word of God. But through neglect of meditation, watchfulness, and prayer, they lose the blessing and find themselves more destitute than before they received it. Often they feel that God has dealt hardly with them. They do not see that the fall is their own. By separating themselves from Jesus, they have shut away the light of his presence. It would be well for us to spend a thoughtful hour each day in, in contemplation of the life of Christ. We should take it point by point and let the imagination grasp each scene, especially the closing one. As we thus dwell upon his great sacrifice for us, our confidence in him will be more constant, our love will be quickened, and we shall be more deeply imbued with his spirit. If we would be saved at last, we must learn the lesson of penitence and humiliation at the foot of the cross. As we associate together, we may be a blessing to one another. If we are Christ's our sweetest thoughts will be of Him. We shall love to talk of Him. As we speak to one another of His love, our hearts will be softened by divine influences. Beholding the beauty of His character, we shall be changed in the same image from glory to glory. Amen? Amen. So what is, what, is, what is this that allows us to sin? I believe you just heard it. It's in forgetting God. That's how we sin. As long as we seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, right? All these other things will be added on to you. See, I can't sin if I'm looking at Jesus. But if I turn my back, you see, and I forget God, what happens? <coughs> Deuteronomy 8 and 19. And it shall be, if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods, and serve them, and worship them, I testify against you this day, that ye shall surely perish. That's forgetting God, isn't it? Psalm 9 and 17. Psalm 9 and 17 says, The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that what? Forget God. Jeremiah 3.21. Just trying to make a little point here. 3.21. A voice was heard upon the high places, weeping in supplications of the children of Israel, for they have perverted their way, and they have forgotten the Lord their God. It's pretty 
pretty simple, isn't it? Pretty simple message. We got to seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Because if we forget God, what are we going to do? We're going to walk in the wrong way. We're going to walk in our own purpose. If we might just turn to John again, 15. John 15 and verse 7. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in ye, shall abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Did you hear that? Do you believe that promise? If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein it is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, and so shall ye be my disciples. That's beautiful promise. Beautiful promise. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Jesus wants your joy to be full. This isn't a difficult thing to understand. All I'm doing is reading a few verses from the Bible. This is my commandment, that ye love one another, as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if you do whatever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant know not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Isn't that the beautiful thing about learning of God? It, it burns in your heart, these things that you learn, and you want to teach and help others grow. Don't you want to just lift your brother up when you learn new things that you want to teach and help? Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you, that you love one another. I know you're, you're, you're moving in, uh, Patty, in a way to um, bring new young people to the church, and I believe that we need to pray in a way that we believe that God's going to do that. Right? And we got to make this place a place where they want to be. Right? That is an important thing. You know, I remember when in this church we had like no persons of uh, musical ability. Right? It was pretty bad. And we prayed, didn't we? We earnestly prayed. And I'm telling you what, we got so many people in here in this church now that can play and sing and do, oh, it's wonderful. The worship that goes on in here, the worship and ministry, uh, music ministry is just phenomenal. I'm, I'm blown away. I don't know how people can even play a piano and look at all that stuff and, and, and sing too. That's out of my pay grade. But anyways, um, let's turn quickly to Ezekiel, Ezekiel 3. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth, and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die as iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Again, 
When a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and committeth iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die because thou hast, hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Do we have, do we have a job to do? Who, who are we? What is our purpose that this church was brought up? We are, we, we, yeah, we have the Elijah message, don't we? we? We are John the Baptist preparing the way for the second coming of the Lord. You know, I was going to go into some other things that I'm not going to go into now. Let's, let us just turn to Romans. Uh, no, forget it. We're just going to close it up. For what, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do you believe that? And that means what? Continually depending upon God, right? It doesn't mean just lip service, right? You can't miss it by 12 inches. It's got to be real. It's got to hit home. Matthew 24, 13 says, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Amen? Amen. I just want you to, in turn, in closing, Revelation 22, and this is where I'm wrapping it up. Very last book of the Bible. Very last chapter of the Bible. In verse 7 it says, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Amen? Amen. Amen. Jump down to verse 11. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Do you hear that? There is no time again. When Jesus comes, it's game over. Put everything back in the box. There isn't seven more years of tribulation. That is a lie of the devil. It says he comes and it's over. That means the judgment today is going on, correct? You read in verse 12, it says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. How can his reward be with him if it's not a finished and done deal? It is a finished and done deal when he comes. There is no more time. Today is the day of salvation, brothers and sisters. We want to be with Jesus because we love Him, not for fear of punishment or hope for reward. That may be an okay way to come to God, but it's not a way to, to have a loving relationship. To give every man according as his work shall be. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that, that do His commandments that they may have a right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates of the city. I say that's enough. Don't you? Isn't that enough to have Jesus? This wonderful person of Jesus Christ that made himself a little embryo and was put inside Mary and was born for us to live forevermore. He's conquered. He's conquered for you and he's conquered for me. I, I want us to grasp the thought that he died your death and lived your life. Don't just say, oh, he died. He died for you. He died your death. Let us think differently this 2020. Let us capture the vision that God wants us to have, who this church was brought up to be, to do this mission, to finish this work, to vindicate God. It's not His will that we still be here. Amen. I believe it. Amen. I believe it. 
Our closing psalm is 448.